Hi guys, welcome back to Engineer's YouTube channel. My name is Patricia Bermudez and I'll be your host for today's video. So for today's video, we will be discussing a calorimeter problem. And for this one, we will be finding the final temperature. So the problem states that a 2 kilogram calorimeter at 100 degrees Celsius has a heat capacity of 4 kilojoules per Kelvin. 100 grams of ice at negative 10 degrees Celsius was placed inside the calorimeter. Calculate the final temperature. So if you notice in this problem, it didn't specify kung alin yung hahanapan natin ng final temperature. Yung calorimeter ba o yung ice? And that is because both of them will reach the same final temperature because they will reach thermal equilibrium. And by equilibrium, it means equal. That's why the root word of that is equal. Equilibrium, equal. So, ayan. First, you have to identify which one is the hotter object. So, the hotter object here is the calorimeter. Why? Because uh, if you compare negative 10 to 100, 100 degrees Celsius is higher than negative 10. So, the calorimeter natin is higher or hotter at 100 degrees Celsius. And therefore, siya yung mag lose ng heat. And therefore, it would have negative Q. Kasi dahil siya yung mas maraming heat, siya yung mas may kapasidad magbigay. Okay? Tapos, yung colder fluid naman, yun yung tatanggap. Kasi we know that heat flows from a hotter object to a colder object. Okay? So, yung colder um, substance natin here is ice at negative 10 degrees Celsius. And therefore, it's the one that will gain heat. And therefore, it will have positive Q. And we know from the first law of thermodynamics that energy is neither created nor destroyed. So kung ano lang yung energy that is already inside the calorimeter, yun lang din yung matatanggap ng ice. And when the ice receives heat, the calorimeter simultaneously loses heat. So to illustrate that, I'm going to draw a graph here. So, this one will represent, the x-axis will represent time, and it's in seconds. And uh, the y-axis will, will represent temperature, and it's in Celsius. And we know that the calorimeter's temperature is 100 degrees Celsius, and the ice's temperature is negative 10 degrees Celsius. So, first for the ice, we know that it will reach zero first before it melts. And it's only at zero degrees that it melts. And when there is a change in phase from solid to liquid, there is no change in temperature. So yung um, line mo remains at zero. And then after that, it will reach a temperature somewhere here. Somewhere below 100. Kasi um, it shouldn't exceed 100. Kasi nga, maglilus ng heat yung calorimeter, di ba? So... Hindi pwedeng ma-exceed ma ng ice yung temperature na ma-reach ng calorimeter. Otherwise, um, merong, it will not be equal. This negative Q and positive Q will not be equal. And it would mean na may energy na nanggagaling somewhere. And we know that energy is neither created or destroyed. And this one is a closed system. wala interaction with the surroundings. Kaya the energy that's within that should remain as that. Walang heat loss or heat gained from the surroundings. And we know that energy is neither created nor destroyed. Kaya we cannot defy the law of thermodynamics. Okay? So, itong, ano naman, calorimeter, it will lose heat. And it will reach this point. So, ayan. Ayan. It's not a straight line, but it should be. So, ayan. Itong point na to, here, yan yung, um, temperature that um, and yung point that they have reached thermal equilibrium. So, ito ay yung T2 which is the same for both the calorimeter and the ice. So, yeah. From here, we can also um, infer that yung ice mo, it will not boil kasi it will not reach 100. So, therefore, yung final stage na ma-reach na ice ay water. It will not reach steam. Kasi in order for you to change water to steam, it has to be greater than 100. 
But here, we know that the temperature shouldn't exceed 100, nor should it meet 100. Kasi kung halimbawa, mamimit nito yung 100, ibig sabihin, walang, ano, walang heat na nagagaling sa calorimeter. So, nasa nagagaling? Doesn't make sense, di ba? So, ayan, it has to be lower than 100. So, yun yung tito natin. The next step here is to equate, is to equate this two. This one and this one. They're equal. Okay? Kasi kung ano lang yung pinapasa ng calorie meter, yun lang din yung natatanggap ng ice. So, yung Q, negative Q of the calorie meter is equal to the positive Q of the ice. But we know here that hindi lang sensible heat that's involved. There is latent heat. So, we have to account for that. And to account for that, we have to um, list down the stages that the ice undergoes again. So, first it's ice at negative 10 degrees Celsius. Then it is ice again, but at its melting point, which is 0 degrees Celsius. This is the maximum temperature that the ice can reach. Then after that, it will melt. And since there is change in phase, there is no change in temperature. So, it remains at 0. And then after that, it will reach the final temperature as water, which is T2. And this T2 is also equal to the T2, the final temperature of the calorimeter. So we have to account the individual heat that is involved with the different stages. Okay? So yung Q1 natin is um, sensible heat, right? Because there's change in temperature. So, the formula for that is MCT delta T. Yung Q2 natin, it is latent heat. So, ano yung, late, ano yung heat uh, that is involved here? It is um, the latent heat of fusion kasi it's melting. And we know that for that, it is positive 80. So, it's M delta H of fusion. And for Q3, it is sensible heat again. It is MCT delta T. And we have to list down what is what are the values for the CP here, the delta H fusion here, and the CP here again. So the CP of ice is 0 0.5 sorry, calories per gram Kelvin. And the CP for water is 1 calorie per gram Kelvin. And we know that the delta H of fusion latent heat of fusion for melting is positive 80 calories per gram. Kasi nag-gain siya ng heat, that's why it melted. So positive siya. Okay? So now, what we do is to equate this two here. And we substitute everything here. So yung Q of ice natin actually is Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3. And the Q of calorie meter natin is just CP dt. Why? Kasi yung CP ng calorie meter is just 4 kilojoules per Kelvin. And para makuha yung um, unit ng heat natin, which is in joules, yung multiply lang natin siya sa Kelvin kasi wala namang gram or kilogram underneath here sa unit natin. Kaya we don't have to multiply it by the mass kasi ang target lang natin makancel ay yung Kelvin. Okay? So, for calorie emitter is negative Cp times T2 minus T1 calorie emitter is equals to yung Q1 natin is MCP delta T. Um, yeah, MCP delta T. And yung delta T natin is this and this. Plus yung fusion, heat of fusion. So, um, M delta H fusion plus m c p delta t and yan yung t2 minus yung zero here now nice okay same t2 it appeared here and uh, yeah we have we just have to equate it to find t2 so the next step here is to substitute the values that we found so, we know that here, ang unit natin here ng energy is in calories. So, yung kilojoules, i-convert natin sa calories. So, yung kilojoules natin is 4, negative 4 kilojoules per Kelvin. 
Okay. And one kilojoule is equals to 1,000 joules. And you know that in one calorie, there is 4.184 joules. And yung change in temperature natin is T2 minus yung initial temperature ng calorie meter, which is 100 Kelvin. The change in temperature in Celsius is equal to the change in temperature in Kelvin. Likewise, the change in temperature in Fahrenheit is the change in temperature in Rankine. You have to know that they have the same um, they have the same jump. Like for example, one calorie, if sorry, one degree Celsius jumps one unit temperature, it's just, it is the same jump as in Kelvin. Okay? So and your MCP, what is M here? It is 100 grams. Tapos yung CP na ice natin is 0 0.5 calories per gram Kelvin. And yung change in temperature in this phase is 0. I 0, sorry. It's 0. Minus, minus 10, so it becomes plus 10 Kelvin. Say, change, the change in Kelvin and Celsius is the same. And um, the heat of fusion, so 100 again, grams times 80 calorie per gram. And then, tutuloy ko siya dito. Plus MCP, so 100 again, 100 grams. And then, yung CP ng water is 1 calorie per gram Kelvin. And yung change in temperature, yung T2 na unknown, minus 0 Kelvin. So from here, the one, one, one way we can verify if this equation is correct or um, consistent is kapag yung, yung unit here on the left-hand side is equal to the unit on the right-hand side. So here, let's, can, let's do some unit cancellation. So kilojoules will cancel here. Joules will cancel. Kelvin will cancel. Matitira. Calories. And here, grams will cancel. Kelvin will cancel. Matitira calories. Here, grams will cancel. Walang Kelvin, so wala siyang change in temperature. Yun, dalawa lang na yun. So, matitira calories ulit. So, ito, grams will cancel. Kelvin will cancel. Matitira calories. So, ang unit natin of energy is in calories. Okay? So, first, what we do is simplify both sides of the equation. Okay? And so, is a negative 4 times 1,000 times 1 over 4.184. Tapos yung T2. Um, minus 100. Ang unit ng buo na to ay calorie. Tapos here, we have 100 times 0 0.5 times 10. So 100 times 0 0.5 times 10. Tapos, plus 100 times 80. Tapos, um, 100 times 1 times T2. So, we can simplify that as um, 100 T2. Kasi T2 minus 0 is T2. Okay? So, it appeared on both sides. So, ngayon, to simplify, what I'm going to do, Ang unit pala dito, yung buo na to, ay in calories as well. Okay? Ayan, pag, pag nag-appear siya on both sides, you can just cancel it off. Okay? So, ngayon, simplify natin to. So, simplify, you have negative 4 times 1,000 divided by 4.184. We have negative 956.0. 0 0.022946 times T2 minus 100 is equal to 100 times 0 0.5 times 10 is 500 plus 80 times 100 is 8,000 plus 100 T2. Okay? So ngayon, distribute natin here. So, negative 956.022946T2. Thus, negative times negative, uh, negative times negative is positive. So, magiging plus na siya. 
So, it becomes plus. Ibigay mo naman ng 100. So, 9, 5, 6. You have to jump 2. 2 places. So, it will be 9, 5, 6, 0, 2.2946 is equals to 500 plus 8,000 plus 100 T2. So, ngayon, we can isolate T2 on one side. And... Um, transfer everything else on the other side. So, negative 956.022946 T2 minus 100 T2. Kasi plus siya dito, right? And if you transpose this, it will become negative. And then, ito, 500 plus 8,000 minus, kasi plus siya, magiging minus na. 95,602.2946 Okay? So, eto, pwede mo lang i-factor yung T2. So, yung T2 mo is negative 956.022946 um, minus 100 is equals to um, let's add this up. Isang right-hand side, 500 plus 8,000 minus 95602.2946 is 87,100, negative, sorry, negative 87,102.2946. And then, yung T2 is, um, you have to, dahil nakamultiply siya dito, If you if you're gonna transpose this on the other side, you have to divide. So negative eight seven eighty Sorry, two nine four six. Tapos divided by ito, negative nine five six point zero two two nine four six. Minus 100. So, yung T2 natin would be degrees Celsius. So, this is the final temperature that both the calorimeter and the ice will reach. Actually, yung step na to, if you know how to do shift solve, then it'll be just one step, one step away. You're just one step away from the answer. But if you if you want to do it na mano-mano, it's also okay. Here, like I said here. So you have to know the basics before you can do some shortcuts. Dahil... Yung T1 natin na degree Celsius, yun ang susundan. But if it's in Kelvin, then T1, T2 would also be in Kelvin. Yeah, this is the um, solution for the problem. I hope you learned a lot from today's video. And thank you for listening. And stay tuned for the next one. Bye-bye.